Historians have shocked the world today with the announcement that humans are really, really stupid and that in all of recorded time, even into the hazy realm of folklore and mythology throughout the rise and fall of countless empires and civilizations, even with the benefit of historical documents and a clear view of the past, humans haven't learnt a thing. Nothing. In fact, if anything, humans are dumber now than they ever have been. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun transferring radioactive water from a leaking storage tank at its Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. TEPCO says radioactive strontium and other substances were detected on the ground around the storage tank from Wednesday to Friday. The company estimates the 120 tons leaked so far based on the change in the level of water in the tank. The work began on Saturday morning. Workers are using four pumps to transfer radioactive water in the tank to an adjacent tank. The utility says the leaked water has not flowed into the ocean because there is no ditch around the tank and the sea is some 800 meters away. TEPCO says it will take at least five days to finish the transfer of water. The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is being forced to review the way it manages contaminated water. This follows the discovery of a second leak in its water storage system. Tokyo Electric Power Company said on Sunday that it has found a small leakage, up to three liters, from an underground storage facility. The tank currently contains about 10,000 tons of radioactive water. The firm now plans to transfer about 2,000 tons of radioactive water from the tank. It says the leakage may be coming from upper part of the tank. This follows an earlier massive leak of about 120 tons of radioactive water from another underground tank. The power company is in the process of transferring 13,000 tons of radioactive water to two different tanks. TEPCO also says it will closely monitor the situation by taking water samples twice a day from 24 locations. The city of Fukushima now has Japan's first facility for reducing the volume of the radioactive sludge from the 2011 nuclear disaster. The facility was installed by the Environment Ministry in a municipal sewage treatment plant. The ceremony was held in a city on Saturday. The facility will dry the sludge at a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and reduce it to about one-fifth of its original volume. The Environment Ministry expects the facility to treat 30 tons of sludge daily. Such sludge has been accumulating in sewage treatment plants in Fukushima and neighboring prefectures due to a lack of progress in the building of interim storage facilities. The volume of such sludge in Fukushima prefecture alone has risen to more than 68,000 tons. <laughs> We have to make many tough decisions when we have a radiation disaster, and that's what we've been doing to move things forward. I think building this facility is one step in that direction. The ministry plans to transfer the dried and shrunken sludge to interim storage facilities and permanent disposal sites, although it is unclear when these facilities will be built. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says his government will do all it can to help rebuild areas devastated by the earthquake and tsunami that hit northeastern Japan two years ago. Abe visited the stricken areas on Saturday. It was his fifth such visit since taking office in December. More than 180 people died in Miyako City in Iwate Prefecture. The city had boasted one of the largest breakwaters in the country. At 10 meters high and over two kilometers long, but the tsunami surged beyond it. Standing on the breakwater, the Prime Minister offered a silent prayer for the victims. 
The city mayor briefed Abe on plans to build a higher breakwater and to begin work in September to develop land to move residents to higher ground. We'll make an all-out effort to rebuild homes and towns, including group relocations of residents. Abe also visited other towns in Iwate Prefecture on Saturday to see how the affected people are faring two years after the disaster. Japanese government officials are preparing for a possible missile launch by North Korea. The South Korean government has warned of a launch possibly later this week. The Japanese are trying to gather more information and are taking every precaution. Defense Minister Itsunori Onodera issued an order to the self-defense forces to destroy any debris that might fall on Japanese territory. The self-defense forces will deploy an Aegis destroyer in the Sea of Japan. It's equipped with an advanced radar system that can track missiles, and it carries SM-3 interceptor missiles. The North Koreans tested a rocket in December. They said they put a satellite into orbit, but diplomats in several countries say they were testing missile technology. Now, defense officials in Seoul say the North Koreans have moved a mid-range ballistic missile to the east coast. Officials in Pyongyang have not notified international organizations of planned routes or times. They've issued such notifications before launches in the past. Historians have shocked the world today with the announcement that humans are really, really stupid. And that in all of recorded time, even into the hazy realm of folklore and mythology throughout the rise and fall of countless empires and civilizations, even with the benefit of historical documents and a clear view of the past, humans haven't learnt a thing. Nothing. In fact, if anything, humans are dumber now than they ever have been. History, say a group of historians, bears out the conclusion, with humans repeatedly displaying their ability to make the same mistakes over and over again. After years of research and consideration of the whole of recorded time, uh, we regret to say that by any measure, humanity, taken as a large group, is pretty fucked up. Or in Latin, gullibalus rapacious enslavementosis. Put quite simply, it means that large groups of humans organized into societies or civilizations, as they're somewhat humorously called, are stupid. They were stupid a long, long time ago, and they're still stupid today. You see, we are collectively the same morons now as we were 10,000 years ago. Absolutely the same, genetically, physically, and socially. Destroying our environment, falling for tyranny despite obvious signs, uh, poisoning our own water and food even when we know it's a bad idea, and so on. Humans' inability to learn as a group has led to reliving the same disasters of exploitation, war, tyranny, slavery, and biocide, etc., but on an ever-increasing scale. Man. When this is pointed out by individuals who notice how fucked up things are, the group reacts like an angry pack, turning on the dissenter or individual's observations before weighing up the issues. Now, take nuclear energy, for instance. It's clear that humans can't deal with the waste or the dangers of running nuclear armaments and industries. No human empire or civilization has ever survived longer than 1,500 years, and yet the waste from a nuclear power station will still be deadly in 76,000 years. You see, really, really fucking stupid. Plainly, this is extraordinarily stupid and just one example of the total dumbness of humans. They are, I'm sad to say, as thick as shit, or in Latin, Maximus Shittus Densorium. A fish has been discovered thriving in a small boat that drifted to the U.S. west coast from a tsunami-hit Japanese port two years ago. It's now on public display at an aquarium in the state of Oregon. The 10-centimeter striped beakfish was found swimming in a box in the 5.5-meter-long fishing boat that washed ashore in Washington state last month. It was later taken to the aquarium in Oregon. This type of fish can be found in its natural habitat in waters around Japan and the East China Sea. Actually, people are pretty fascinated about seeing this fish and the, the fact that it came all the way over from Japan in the debris. The boat's owner is a resident of northeastern Japan. He says the empty boat had been taken ashore at the time of the disaster. He speculates that the fish probably found shelter in the boat as it drifted toward the U.S. 
Rising tension on the Korean peninsula may lead to the evacuation of embassies and international groups in the North's capital, Pyongyang. North Korean foreign ministry officials on Friday called on foreign entities to be prepared to evacuate. Countries with embassy staff include Russia and Britain. A British Foreign Office spokesperson said they were told that if war breaks out, North Korea can't guarantee the safety of diplomats and representatives of international organizations from April 10th. He said staff would not be immediately evacuated while discussions are held with the representatives of other countries. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said he is studying the North's notification. The proposal was made to all embassies in Pyongyang, and we are now trying to clarify the situation. He says Russia is closely discussing the matter with the member countries of the six-party talks on North Korea's nuclear program.